Okay, this is the first 3D printing job that I've attempted. I borrowed my son's 3D printer, low cost, less than $200. And I'm printing a gauge for 70 millimeter Nova Jaws. 3D printing can open up opportunities for design, prototyping, and creating custom jigs and, and fixtures for uh, wood turning. In this video, I want to give you a high level understanding of what's involved in 3D printing so you'll have just enough information to decide if it's something that, that you want to pursue. Why in the world is a wood turner who uses a lathe possibly interested in something like this? Let's find out. First of all, it's good for prototyping, uh, test turning ideas quickly and easily before committing to expensive wood. The second reason is that uh, perhaps you need to it, it can solve a problem. Perhaps you need a special set of uh, jaws or sharpening jigs or, or dust collection uh, fittings. And I'll show you a whole lot more in, in a moment. Maybe you just like to explore things and, and, and like to play with technology. Let's talk a little bit about the different types of 3D printers. I think you can say they fall into three broad categories. Uh, beginner ones such as this clearly is. This is one my son loaned me. He bought it almost five years ago paid about two hundred dollars for it. And a very similar model by the same company still available today for about $200 on Amazon. No, I'm, I'm not uh, experienced enough in using 3D printers to recommend one, but I will, uh, I'll show a link to this in the show notes. Intermediate models can, can cost uh, maybe between $500 and $1,500, and then after that, uh, the sky's the limit. Uh, you can pay up to $10,000 and more and to get uh, extra uh, precision, larger build volumes, and advanced materials compatibility. Um, what do you get for the money? Typically, uh, an entry-level machine comes as a kit. This particular model, I, I think, uh, as I looked in the manual, had about 20 different screws uh, that needed to be to, to assemble the, the parts. Uh, it takes several hours because there are a number of components. YouTube videos are likely available for most any model you're going to get. Building from a kit may not be all that bad as it provides you with a better understanding of, of the components and how they work and it makes it easier for you to actually diagnose something if, it, if you're having a, a problem. Many of the machines have user groups that share knowledge on modification. A couple, let me show you a few modifications that my son made on his machine. He added these uh, additional links to provide some support for this cable when this moves so it wouldn't uh, break loose. Uh, here he added a, a a pulley assembly that, that makes the uh, filament uh, feed a, a lot, lot smoother. And these are all modifications that came, I think, from some, some user group. Uh, it's just part of that learning, tinkering process that uh, uh, required in these, these entry-level machines. The other, mod other modification he added was this uh, vent uh, cover so the air would flow out instead of up. An entry machine will take longer to heat up. The, the bed actually has to heat, uh, and this, this one takes about five minutes for the, the bed to reach 100 degrees centigrade. You've got to manually level this bed. You think about it, this printer is going to move back and forth horizontally, and, 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 and in, in this, this plane, it's got to be level to get, to get that filament to come out and touch on the same, same spot. This calibration is, is called leveling, and on entry-level machines like this, it requires adjusting uh, these uh, screws or leveling screws on uh, all, all four corners. The more expensive ones, they're self-leveling. An entry machine like this takes some tinkering to get used to uh, and to get it to work. Entry printers like this work best with, with easy uh, to print filaments like, like this, PLA, uh, which stands for polyactic acid. It's one of the most commonly used uh, thermoplastic materials in 3D printing, and it's derived from renewable resources such as cornstarch or sugarcane, and uh, so it's eco-friendly and biodegradable. There are a variety of filaments with different characteristics like hardness and flexibility. We're going to talk about those in just a moment, but know that some can cost more and will require more expensive printer use. So a, an intermediate printer, uh, maybe $1,000 plus or $500, $1,500, they tend to come assembled, they print faster, uh, they have better quality components, they're less fidgety. Um, you've got to use one to, to appreciate how fidgety and, and tinkering some of these things uh, are, but the, the more expensive they are, the less uh, uh, fidgety they're going to be. Uh, the more expensive ones have enclosed chamber heating systems and cooling fans designed to deliver a better print quality and they can capture fine details 
uh, with precision. They can also use a larger range of uh, filaments and they have more sophisticated controls and settings. So let's look, uh, talk a little bit about filaments. Some filaments open up possibilities for more advanced projects like PETG, which is stronger, or flexible fil filaments like TPU, or even wood-infused filaments for a unique look. Uh, you you want to consider what kind of projects you're going to be printing to look at what kind of filaments you're going to need, uh, and, and maybe that, that might be a driving consideration for what, what printer you may want to get. But the PLA ones are the easiest to print. The PLA is the easiest to print. It's got a wide variety of, of color uh, filaments, which can be uh, very good for uh, any number of projects, uh, toys, and prototyping. Uh, as I mentioned, it, it is biodegradable, uh, environmentally uh, friendly, because it comes from fermented plant starch, such as tapioca, corn, sugarcane, uh, as opposed to petroleum-based pl plastics like most of the other filaments. Uh, Polyethylene terephthalate glycol uh, is more durable than PLA and it's better for functional jigs uh, and parts that are going to uh, see more stress. ABS is the strongest one, but it's, it's tricky to print in that it can warp, it needs that in, in closure, and for very sturdy, uh, and it's, it's great for very sturdy parts. They've got filaments that are wood infused that can blend wood fibers and plastic for pieces that you can actually sand and stain with a wood like finish. So maybe that's part of a, a, a wood turning uh, project. Let's talk a little bit about the printing process uh, from idea to object. Uh, first of all, let's look at some of the different kinds of printing uh, lathe wood turning accessories you might have. Yeah, that's, uh, that'd, be, that'd be the perfect fit right there. Uh, minimum, and I guess this is the outer one is for the max. The max it would go. I never make one that big, and that that shows that one. And then the recess on the inside. friend David List makes a number of accessories with 3D printers, such as this tool holder that just fits right into your bedways to hold a few tools while you're working on a project. David also made these set of jaws for uh, a Nova Record Power, which is just great for reverse chucking or, or to finish off the bottom of a bowl because it's not going to leave any marks. It'll hold it secure. It's a lot faster than a, than a jam chuck. Need a special dust connect, uh, dust collection fitting for or for your uh, shop vac hose such as this one that's made by David List. A center finder for marking uh, spindles. Here's a Morse taper uh, cleaner. The plans that I printed. The plans called for uh, tur uh, printing a handle, but it was a whole lot faster to turn one out of wood. It works great. You do a lot of video or camera work, these quick uh, release uh, camera mounts for still cameras or video cameras uh, are real handy. Uh, Bird Delisle out of uh, Spruce Grove, Canada made a whole bunch of these things for his shop and printed them out. This one I bought, uh, it's made out of metal, but he says the plastic ones work just as well. Segment guide. A sharpening angle setter for your platform. Perhaps a container to hold your sanding discs. And then there's always dust collector hangings of different types for four inch pipe or otherwise like these. So how does a digital process work in uh, 3D printing? Well, I, I think in some respects, I don't know anything about CNC. Uh, uh, CNC machines have never used one, but the process as I understand is very similar in that uh, you're going you're gonna to start with a uh, 3D model and then you're going to apply software to it to convert that into language that the machines can understand. The biggest difference between CNC and a, and a 3D printer is a CNC is a subtractive process similar to you to turning a piece on, on the lathe. Like, as a local wood turning instructor, Frank Bowers used to say to students, if you're turning a bear, turn away the parts that aren't, the, aren't part of the bear. So the CNC uh, 
computer numerical control process involves using computer software to control the machine tools for manufacturing parts. Uh, the 3D printing uses an additive process where uh, to create the final product, and the, the printer takes an appropriate file. Uh, it, it's an image uh, or, or a model, 3D uh, model of, of the project. Then you apply a piece of software that actually takes that 3D model and slices it one layer at a time to convert it to machine instructions. There are, there are a number of different free uh, files out there for wood turning related accessories. And you can find those on, on two different sites and then maybe there's more. There's thingiverse.com and printables.com. These files typically have an extension of S, uh, .stl. Basic 3D design software exists if you want to start from scratch and not just take somebody else's uh, plan. Tinkercad is a free program for, for beginners. More serious wood turners might consider a full CAD uh, software for complex designs, and some programs are uh, CAD programs are available for a free trial. But like any other uh, professional software, it's going to be expensive for you to continue to use it. So let's let's take an example of an item I want to uh, turn. 40 millimeter jaws for my, uh, for my Nova uh, Chuck. So I search and I find this 3D image file, a set of 40 millimeter Nova jaws. It's an STL file. Next, I use a slicing program, what they call a slicing program, to convert that 3D image into a file with a G code extension, which provides the step by step printing instruction that the printer uh, can understand. Typically, generate, generating uh, G code uh, files that dictate the printer's movement include the layer heights, you know, how tall a project's going to be, uh, how much infill, is it solid or is it a percentage where there, it, it's not, doesn't need to necessarily be strong. Uh, here's an example of, of an item. This is not a solid block, but it's got a lot of uh, voids and space uh, in here to make it go faster because it doesn't need the strength. Uh, and, and if you made it solid, it would take a lot more filament and it would take a lot longer to to make. So the G code typically uh, dictates the printer's movements on layer heights, which affects the quality, uh, infill percentage, which is the uh, solidity of it. There are a number of free slicing programs available for downloading from the internet, such as uh, Creality Slicer, uh, Cura by UD Maker, and Prusa Slicer, and, and there are others. There are many uh, resources on the internet that will help you through that process of using that slicing uh, software to help you un understand what the parameters are and, and what changes you, you might want to uh, make. The next step is actually to start printing. So we're going to take the file and you're going to have it on an SD card or possibly a USB connection thing on the printer and, and plug it in for the printer to be able to read that file. Now, the first level is, is critical, and that's where the importance of this leveling the bed and having an appropriate uh, uh, temperature. The, and you want to watch for uh, signs of poor adhesion and adjust if necessary. Now, uh, here's some examples of some problems that I had uh, getting the bed level and, and the proper adhesion. Here was a set of jaws I was printing where I didn't level the bed properly and I didn't get adhesion and this is what it looked like. <laughs> How long a project's going to take is going to depend on the filament you're using in, in the machine and the complexity of, of the project, but it could take anywhere from uh, an hour or more or, or days depending on, on the project. Post-processing, uh, you're going to get it off, the, the next step is removing the project from the bed. You now the printing pad is some sort of Teflon plated uh, stuff so it doesn't stick but I understand sometimes there's a problem. If you flex it a little bit, you ought to be able to get uh, flex it enough to get a, a putty knife under under the thing and that will help you kind of kind of pop these things loose. And there you go. And there's the, that, that little uh, gauge. And then another step, once you get it off, there might be a need for some light sanding or, or finishing if, if desired, depending on your project. So that was my high-level uh, introduction to 3D printing for, for a wood turner. I don't know enough about it to really be able to answer many questions. If you have used a 3D printer to make some wood turning accessories, please leave a comment below as to what you made and what kind of experience that, that you had. And remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back here.